What's up, YouTube? For today's video, we are doing a little relationship advice video because on Instagram, we actually get a lot of questions about us, I guess. Yeah. And like what makes us work and how we get along. And we've been together for almost five years and we've been married for a little over two months. But it's like always been super easy. Yeah, and we've almost been living together for that whole five years yeah. as well. Like we moved in with each other in like the first three months or mm -hmm. something. Of our Which is really uncommon. Yeah. But it just worked for us and it was right for us and like none of it ever felt weird or forced yeah. or rushed or anything. And so. we get comments of people saying like you guys like seem like a perfect match. Is this how you guys really are in real life? Like on your YouTube videos and literally like we're the exact same like that you see on our CKLA videos versus like how in we person. really are in person. And we don't really argue. We haven't. Not I really. really. I mean, we bicker sometimes, which yeah. is normal. Because if you don't have some disagreements, then that's not mm -hmm. really. I mean, <laughs> but the crazy thing is, I guess. we've never had like a major fight ever in the full five years. No, like, nothing... I mean disagreements yeah. or like. But then, like ten minutes later, you're like, nah, whatever. Yep. I mean, I'm not really a grudge holder to begin with. And I think one of the biggest things that does make us work is, and I can like talk about my past experience with dating versus like what this is. And with us now, it's like, if there is a disagreement, both of us are very independent. We don't yes. rely on each other. We don't like, we're not each other's hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, if she's traveling or if I'm traveling, we're not like dead in the water and like depressed and like, oh my God, like what am I to do? Cause we both have things going on and yeah. so we're both busy. And I think that's one of the number one things you can do right. in a relationship to become like a good match, if you will. I well, I think the misconception is, is people think they need someone to complete yeah. them, which I always, just, I think I've said it since the beginning is I was so focused on building my career and like building me first that like we kind of just came together and it was perfect. Like it mm -hmm. wasn't like, oh, I needed you. Not to say I don't need him, but like, if that makes any sense, yeah. like I didn't need him to figure out who I am. Exactly. And I'm the same way. I, I rode BMX professionally, worked very hard at it to become a professional at it. I also have my multiple businesses, so I'm very busy. It's not like, the, what I do see and what I've experienced in my past relationships too is one of the partners has absolutely nothing going on. They don't have any hobbies. They don't really have a job that they're focused on. So all their focus goes on to their partner. And if that partner isn't giving them the full attention, then there's like arguments, there's- Jealousy. Know, yeah, there's jealousy. If you leave, there's like a thousand text messages asking where you are, what you're doing, because that other partner doesn't have anything else to focus on other than the other partner. And so I would say the biggest thing that makes Crystal and I work is we don't have that. It's like, she's so busy all day. I'm busy busy all day and then around like six or seven o'clock at night we turn things off and we actually spend quality time with each other we'll watch a movie together or we'll go out and do something go out to dinner watch hell's kitchen yeah watch hell's <laughs> kitchen you know just just stuff like that but and it's actually really funny because i actually hear a lot of youtube couples say that like youtube is really stressful on their relationship and it's like and i don't really get that and I think it's because we don't use YouTube like the platform to make our living maybe so there's not really that pressure I think what kind of works for us is we started our channel purely just to document and like mm -hmm. to have the memories and like we started off just vlogging everything and doing challenges just for fun and then it kind of like took off and people were liking what they were saying and maybe it's because we were genuine I don't know but I mean so we don't really have that pressure I think yeah, when and we I, film and I think it's crazy videos. that YouTube couples complain about stuff like that because like for example she's got a full-time gig I've got a full-time gig and we're still doing YouTube right. and YouTube's actually kind of what brings us together mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and so if YouTube couples are making a hundred thousand plus a year just making YouTube videos and it's a lot of pressure. I can't really relate to that because like if, if we could just do YouTube full time that would be and so make, nice. make a living from it, that'd be amazing. Right. And another thing that I've noticed and I've had friends like this in the past and stuff where they're in a relationship but they have one foot out of the relationship where they're kind of flirty with other people like on their phone or through social mm. media. That's a big no because you're never gonna be fully committed to your relationship. And, and you're also always trying to like hide your phone from your partner because you're scared that you're gonna get a DM from somebody that they're gonna see. And it's just, when you're not doing that stuff, everything is just so relaxed and so nice. On both of our phones, we have our faces. <laughs> the to face where, ID. The face ID to where we jump on each other's phones anytime. But crazy thing is we trust each other so much that we don't, like we don't actually go through each other's no. stuff at all. Another thing that I think a lot of couples need to realize 
is Crystal and I both understand the fact that if one of us wanted to cheat, we you would. You wouldn't do it anyway. Yeah, it's like, if I knew that like Crystal wanted to cheat or if I was always trying to like keep her from cheating, why would I want to stay in that? Not like worth I would it. rather her cheat on me so I could just like live, <laughs> so live you have my an life. Out. Yeah, so I have an out and I can go live my life. We don't have any jealousy whatsoever. No. We trust each other 100%. And I would say that this is the first relationship out of my past relationships where there's 100% trust. And I didn't think that that was possible. I mean, it's very nice to have that because like Crystal sometimes will go on an ice skating tournament. Competition. Yeah, competition for like... <laughs> like nationals is like yeah, a week long. Yeah, a week long. You'd be gone for like a week and a half sometimes. And there's not one thought in my mind that crosses like, what is she doing? You know, because I know that she's so into her work. She's so into what she does that she does that. And then by the time she's done, she like goes back to her hotel to go to sleep. I also room with my little sister. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just like, but, there, but even if you room by yourself, like, yeah. I wouldn't even think anything of it. And no. then I'm sure that you don't think of like, what am I doing at home? You know, no. it's like, I'm already so busy that I don't want that extra stress in Too my life energy. to try and like balance some sort of secret life. It's, uh, you so know, dumb. yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna commit, you gotta commit. You gotta go for it. Just gotta be yourself and make sure like, this is the one thing, like I work with teenage girls and the thing that kills me is when I see them hop from relationship to relationship and I'm like, why can't you just like be confident in who you are and like figure out who you are first, you know? Because mm -hmm. yeah. that's the most important thing is you have to know who you are, what you like, what you need in a partner. You know, like I needed someone that was mellow because I'm very like spontaneous, let's do it. Like I don't really take a lot of time to think about things and he's like, you need to like, think about this for a second before you just do it. I knew I needed someone with those opposite qualities, otherwise I'd be in big trouble, so. And we complement each other Very well. really well in yeah. that way because for example, her spontaneous stuff is like, moving into a new apartment or buying a new car. I'm like, looking at it one time and yeah, I'm good. Yeah, she sees like, like the first apartment she sees without comparing others, she's like, let's do it, I love it. And then the next one, she's like, I love this even more, let's do it. So. If I wasn't in the picture, she would have just chose the first one. Yeah. And so I have to really look into everything and I have to compare everything yes. because yes. I understand that we're going to be living there for the next like year or two. <laughs> and I'm and like, no, we're just going to be living there for a year. But then like different mindset. when it comes to like going somewhere just on a spontaneous trip, like she's spontaneous that way, but I'm all, I'm, I'm more like, all right, let's go. And then she's more of a planner where she like packs oh, our yeah. snacks and like mm -hmm. where like that's where i details that's where i'm faulty because like if it were up to me i'd be like all right let's go and we'd get on the road and then be like crap we have no snacks <laughs> we have nothing yeah so that's she plans so where i don't and yeah. i plan where she doesn't i'm also so a, a scheduled based person which mm -hmm. you're not and it's really important that i had someone that was opposite than me in that way because otherwise if we both had an agenda and then we sat down and they were conflicting, that would just be yeah. a nightmare. So I'm glad that he's just like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I just have everything written oh, out. I mean, every single morning, she's got like a calendar on her desk and every, every, day, every day is filled out with stuff. And I've never had a calendar in my life. <laughs> I don't keep track of any of that stuff. I just like take stuff on as it comes to me and I just take care of it and it's done. So that's like, for me, that's like the number one thing. That's my biggest advice is like, know who you are, be confident in who you are, have the things you want established. So that way when you do come across a person or you do find someone that you really and truly like, you figure out what their strengths and their weaknesses are and see if they really do match you. Yeah. Um, so that way there's no, you like kind of overgo those like weird tensions because you're just making up for each other. Yeah, because you know? if you find somebody that's exactly like you, which most people try and find, like yeah. Crystal and I are a lot We're of very like similar, personalities, yeah. but if somebody's exactly like you, like if I was dating somebody exactly like me, we'd be going on road trips with no snacks. <laughs> I mean, it'd be funny and stuff like that, but at the end, like, there would be a lot of stuff that would be missing because that person would be just like me. So everything that I'm missing, she fulfills. Everything she's missing, I fulfill. And it's not like it's, it comes natural. Like, you definitely have to, like, give and take some. Definitely. Like, in a relationship. I've had to learn that. Yeah. and For sure. And once you do that, like, without being bitter about it, mm -hmm. because you need to realize you have a whole nother life in your life. And right. that life's not going to be exactly like you. So you need to make arrangements to fit that life inside your life. And so, you know, I think with that, you're like on the path to a great relationship. You also have to be patient. Mm -hmm. You have to be patient. You have to be honest. You have to be open. You can't have a wall. Yeah. That just doesn't work. And I don't think there's ever been anything that's happened that I haven't told him. Like he pretty much knows everything about me and same with me about him. And like, I even was so intrigued about his past relationships just to know like, 
where his hard spots are and where he has some heartache and bitterness. And so I sat down, we had, we both had a glass of wine and I said, tell me your story. And I wanted to know about every past girlfriend he had, every fault she had, everything she did that hurt him. It didn't make me mad. It didn't make me jealous. I didn't have any sort of feeling other than like, wow, that really sucks. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. And let me make sure I don't have any of those qualities. See, and that's the thing that blew my mind because in a relationship, normally when the other person talks about their past, the other person gets really jealous or Why? all that. But the, but at the same time, it makes like, no sense. Yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. When we first met, like I did kind of have a wall up because totally did. I dated kind of. those types of girls that like, and I'm sure girls and guys can relate, relate to this, but yeah. like if I just left the house for an hour, I would get 20 plus text messages. And then when I came back, I would be getting accused of, did I cheat? It just wore on me and wore on me. And after my last breakup, I just needed a long break. Like I didn't want to date at all. And then when I met Crystal, um, everything was just like so perfect. But at the same time, I told her like, I don't want to, I don't want a relationship. And all she said to me was like, I don't care. All I care about is the time that I get to spend with you, which was crazy because like other girls that I kind of dated before Crystal that wasn't in a relationship, they left because I didn't want a relationship. But Crystal like hung on. She was understanding of the whole thing. And with her understanding is what made me want to get into a relationship with her. What I have right now, I didn't think exists. I've had four serious relationships, I think, before Crystal. And like some of them I've been with like for years and all of them were somewhat toxic. And I like what Crystal and I have, I literally did not think existed. All I can say is they do exist <laughs> and they come out randomly. And she knew that she wanted to marry me. Like right, right after, after our that. first date, I called my mom. I was like, I'm going to marry this guy. And she was like, you need to slow down. And it's crazy. Cause like for me, like I knew that things were like almost too good to be true. But at the same time, I, I thought like, she's not really my type. She's not like, <laughs> no, like right here. <laughs> That's the thing that was like so hard for me to digest because like she is my type. The problem is, is I was dating girls in the past that weren't actually my type, even though I thought they were. And the reason why I thought they were is because I started out dating that type of girl. And that's why I had so many issues in all my past relationships. So when I met Crystal, she was my type right in front of my face. I just didn't see it. So if you're going through the same thing where you're like constantly dating people that's just so toxic, like just open up your mind and the person that is good for you is probably right in front of your face. You're just not seeing it. And Crystal was very, very, very patient with me. <laughs> and I don't know how she did it because I can tell you right now, 99% of girls would have not stuck around from all of the closed off. I mean, I was like, what's the point in like just breaking it off just because it's not right now, yeah. you know what I mean? Cause it's, I think that's the issue a lot of girls have. And I, I say this because I had the same issue and I still continue to work on it. It's not like one of my strengths, but when you're a kid, you're like, I'm gonna get married at 22, right? And then you're like, oh, and then I'm gonna have my first kid when I'm 27. So like you have, and you create this like crazy timeline in your head. And then when it doesn't happen, you're like, what? Mm -hmm. And so I think that was something that I struggled with for a long time because I was like, I'm going to get married by the time I'm 30 and then I'm going to have a kid right after and like I'm 31 and I just got married. So, <laughs> But I mean, yeah. it just works out the way it's supposed to and you have to realize that like these things are working on two people's timelines, not just yours. Yeah. So like, I that, mean, I can't really force you into doing something, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's what I'm saying, like have intentions, don't have expectations. Like right. I can say a scenario right now to where everybody understands what I'm talking about. Holidays. Okay. Everyone like, for example, Halloween, everyone has the big expectation that they're going to be going to the hottest Halloween party and it's going to be the best night ever and literally 50% get let down because they have so many expectations in their mind on how Halloween night's gonna go. You know, you go home and you're disappointed and you're like, that was the worst Halloween ever. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about. Like just have intentions on what you want to do and the things you want to experience. Every once in a while, you're gonna get that perfect, like this is exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But as a partner, like you definitely need to choose somebody that you want. Like don't, don't be like, oh, she's kind of what I wanted. Yeah. But like just if, if there's low drama, if you can both be independent 
and go and do whatever you, you want to do. You have to be a team, though. Jealous, yeah. Like to me, that's like I think that's the deal breaker for a lot of people. Is it has to be like fifty fifty. It has to be half you, half me. We complement each other in almost it has every way. To be 50/50. But if one person's doing everything, even when we go out to eat, like sometimes she pays, sometimes yeah. I pay. I mean, I kind of like the way we personally the way we handle our financial situation is I have my own personal account, he has his personal account, and then we have a joint account mm-hmm. that we put you know money into the pot for like rent or bills or whatever it might be but i don't know i just think that the most important thing is that like i'll do something and then he'll do it and then i'll do it yeah and i mean there's like there's times where like either i'll be hurting he financially won't cook, like <laughs> yeah i don't cook i can cook cereal by choice i would rather just cook but like for example in the very beginning of our relationship i was like in between things in my business and all this stuff and so i had like a financial hardship and so she stepped to the plate and she was like covering a lot of our stuff that we had going on. And then like there's times where, like for example, COVID right now, right now like right now I'm she's not, not really unable working. to work. Yeah. So I'm covering everything. And so in a relationship, you just need to like step up to the plate. Like you're a team. So the most important things that we could say is do you figure out who you are? What do you like? What do you not like? Cause that's important. The second thing is you gotta work together. You gotta be a team. Doesn't work if you don't have a team. No. There's no wine team. No. Big suit dango. Exactly. Three, you have to be open-minded to change and you have to be open-minded to growing and not have expectations, but have intentions. Exactly. I think that, would, that is the most important part. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. And that's that's the thing, Chris and I keep it real every time. I mean, if, if we're like- Even if it stings for a second, yeah, it's better like, that I've told you the truth. No games. Yeah, no games. No like games. games, like Chris and I have never played games mm-hmm. ever like our entire relationship. If you're with somebody that plays games or if you play games, like you need to figure your beep out because (laughs) that is not gonna work. Nope. I think that was pretty helpful. We can do a part two on this. Like you guys have actual like questions Mm -hmm. about any relationship or even our relationship, we'd be happy to answer them. I have no problem being honest. Yeah, we can be be Dr. Phil for a minute, you know, (laughs) if if you need us to be. Yeah. so just let us know in the comments, even like send us a DM on Instagram and yep. we'll just compile them all together until we have enough to make a video. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that but good. we need to call out three of our Instagram followers real quick. Which by the way, we're super close to 10K and I'm so excited. And we just hit 10.5K subscribers today. So woot woot, welcome to the Sandy Club, all our newbies. Yep. So the first one is bank.s1212. What up? Born fighter underscore IKG. Ooh, that sounds like a strong person. Yep, and... Ha, that's the YouTube family I like. Not their actual account, it's a fan page, oh. but still. Let's do Purple Princess Pari. Ooh. I like to pick the fancy ones. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Well, anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Comment below anything else you'd like to see us do. But until next time, see ya.